Uh, so uh, that's me. <laughs> I'm gonna make this window white for a while so I can introduce myself. Uh, again, greetings from Russia. Uh, I'm a space artist. You may know me from Facebook. Uh, you may know me from my space calendars. Uh, or maybe you just have seen me somewhere in the internet. It's, it's late night here in Russia. And uh, next uh, half an hour or an hour, I don't know how it will go, I will talk about my space paintings. Uh, here's some links to my social media. If you're here, you already know it, <laughs> especially Facebook. Uh, but just in case, I'm gonna show it later again. So let's make my window smaller. Okay. And uh, let's go to the... Let's go, let's go. Okay, everything is all right. Let's go to my next slide, my next picture. So, uh, just a few words about how I started all this topic, how I started to work on these paintings. I've, uh, I've always been interested in sci science fiction uh, and I've always liked to draw something about it, but I've never dreamt of working in real cosmonautics, as we call it here, or aircraft, spacecrafts with some real stuff. So here you can see me sitting in the descending module of Soyuz. Uh, that was the story how my dream came true. I, um, one day I just got this idea to start drawing real space stuff and I wrote to the cosmonaut uh, and he answered me. If you want to know more about this story, I can tell it later. Just ask me in comments uh, for this translation. Uh, because I, I just think it, it would be weird if I will tell about it before I'll show some paintings so people will look at it and think who's this, why she's talking about her. So uh, I can tell it later if you want me to. And here are my first paintings. Uh, you may know some of them. For example, this one is favorite of everyone. Uh, I made them for the Yuri's Day 2017. Here in Russia, this uh, day, it's the main cosmonautics uh, celebra uh, event, it's the main celebration when we just, uh, I don't know, make some um, big geek events or um, tr traditional celebrations and just uh, have some concerts. It's the main celebration in Russia for cosmonautics. And my dream was to make few paintings and to bring them to the Star City. Uh, it's a place where cosmonauts are training in Russia. Uh, we call it Zvezdny Gradok, but if to translate it literally, it's Star City. And my dream came true. I brought my first patients there. You can see in this big city hall. This city hall was built uh, with the help of Yuri Gagarin himself. And also on these walls, uh, there are space patients of uh, famous space artists. And, and one of them was Alexei Leonov. And I was uh, really proud of this. So to the paintings. This one, as I, as I already told, is the most favorite of everyone. Um, everyone is writing to me about it all the time. And uh, I'm really happy that people enjoy it. Uh, so this painting is uh, it's, uh, the most inspired one and uh, the most dreamy one. And it's called uh, Dreamer from Kaluga. As you can see, I wrote here also size of every painting I'm taking, talking about, and uh, all, all of them are acrylic on canvas with little differences, but most of all, it's acrylic on canvas. So about this painting, I just want to show how I began it. Here, is, here goes very, very small doodle. I made this during the concert. Um, I was listening to these piano sounds, I hadn't done any space painting before and I just had this idea of showing the beauty of uh, the spacescapes and also the engineering behind it as I'm an architect by the education and I wanted to add there some schemes because I have, haven't seen anything like this in other paintings. So my idea was to show this uh, atmosphere and the small, uh, the small sketch, it doesn't show it very well, but for me that was like the start. Then I made sketch in the Photoshop. <laughs> Here's some funny stuff also. And here in Photoshop I made other sketch for the big painting. 
So uh, the first thing I decided was uh, this uh, background. It was uh, dark green uh, as I wanted to show this effect of uh, northern lights like some kind of miracle or, or alchemy is happening. And I, I wanted to add there something historical and realistic like Salkovsky house. I wanted it to look exactly like it looks in reality. So to do that, I went to the Google Maps and I went on this online tour around the house. You can do it. You can walk through his studio, look at his, I don't know, just trying to imagine what he worked around uh, all this uh, time when he was sitting there late at night enjoying his uh, works. And I needed this because I wanted... Okay, okay, that's spoilers. Spoiler alert. I made all this because I wanted to... Um, enlighten one of the windows in his house. I wanted to fire the light in his studio, but uh, th there can be some awkward mo moment if I will uh, enlighten a window in his uh, wife's bedroom or somewhere else, because that's not the place where he, um, where he wrote his manuscripts. And I wanted this um, creative moment. I wanted to express something about his creativity. Uh, also, I wanted to use his works. Uh, that's really amazing because all these uh, schemes, uh, they're really old. And he was, uh, I think he was really the greatest dreamer of his time. And this is, I think, 1883. And this is a drawing of the, um, of the spaceship as Tselkovsky dreamt about it, as he saw it. Uh, also, I want to say that if you want, you can write comments here. Maybe I'll try to answer. I'll try to answer. Um, I can see them now. So, about this scheme. It's really amazing because uh, the principle of movement is yet the same. It's jet propulsion, but here is, it is uh, not uh, engines as, as we are used to it, but it's a cannon. And small human figures, you can see them flying here. I hope you can see them. And uh, I use this scheme. Also, here you can see... Oh, okay. I need to move my video. You can see his other drawings. It's about living in space in 1883. Really amazing. Okay, to the next one. And I will make myself tiny again. So here's this scheme I talked about so much. I used some silver paint for it, real silver paint, <laughs> so it wasn't easy to, to to make these small and really thin lines here. And also above this scheme, I wanted to add uh, this real so Soyuz spacecraft as a spaceship that travels in reality, uh, that carry people to International Space Station, like Tsiolkovsky imagined that people will go to space, and here they go. So. This is this is the painting about how dreams come true <laughs> for me from this scratch to this painting. And for Salkovsky, sadly, he haven't seen it, but yet uh, he dreamed in 1893 about this living in space and traveling somewhere through space. And here it goes. That was a long story about Tselkovsky drawing and also all of my paintings, uh, they are available, available as prints. Some of them are available for purchase. Just go to my website or write to me. I'll give you all information. Uh, next painting that I want to talk about is about... Um, it's about the first spacewalk. If to talk exactly, it's about the moments after the first spacewalk. As you know, it was performed by Alexei Leonov. And his uh, team member was Pavel Belev. You can see on this picture both of, the, of them. And this flight, it was really, um, it was complicated. Uh, they had a lot of emergency during it. And my first idea was to draw this uh, really difficult and complicated way, how they traveled, how, what difficulties they had on their way to the space and back, but then I thought that I want to make it more romantic. So I... Ah, here you can see this sketch, really small one, like Tsiolkovsky one. It's so small, it's like five centimeters, I think. And my idea was to add a, a more 
uh, feeling like they returned home and it's comfy and it's cozy and they're sitting near this fire and they're enjoying their, I don't know, maybe tea in their teacups and this capsule that they returned in is near them and they're, um, maybe you can see here, their space use, they're getting dry here. Uh, so I've decided uh, not to talk about these emergency situations, but to talk about how they returned home and it's cozy here. Because this planet, it's home. You know that they returned to the forest, it was cold. Uh, they waited uh, about three days for the, for the people to save them, but yet they returned home. They returned safely and everything will be okay. And this cozy feeling I wanted to show it here. Also about them, you can see this. I don't know how you call it, flight sequence, I think, or mission sequence. So I wanted to make this painting a little educational. Like you can see how stages separate here, and here another stage separates. And tiny Leonov uh, go from this, this, go, ah, here, here, here he goes, sorry, I lost him. Uh, I even added a little humor here as a small UFO is looking at us from this cloud and also here they are returning and so this painting it's like the beginning like with this fire of this circle and the end of it like they, they're coming home and here it is this group capsule okay so i added this scheme later in photoshop before adding it to the painting and um, close up to this cozy moment when both of them are enjoying their tea near the fire and you also can see <laughs> these sketches of uh, space suit getting dry here okay and in the interior that's not so interesting so let's go to the next one this painting is also from this uh, line of works that i made for the first year when i became interested in real space <laughs> but this painting is different because i'm i wasn't the only author of it I had this thought that maybe I should try to make a painting with an expert. As I wasn't so very much acquainted with space flights, uh, I wanted to ask someone to join me in this creational process and to rule this process, <laughs> maybe to add something. So uh, this man, Alexei Mazur, he became my co-author. I went to his lecture about space shuttles and I thought, ha, huh, here's the match. So also he's now my boyfriend, but that's another story. Yet, uh, yet um, we started this painting and um, our, uh, our sketch, it looked like this. So as you can see, it's not easier for two people to make a painting as my skill as head rendering, I used it at the end. But before this, we should have thought how we can manage this process. So we made some 3D models. You can see here this, uh, uh, so, sorry, too fast for me. I can, uh, you can see here uh, some future blueprints and you can see here also, I don't know, uh, these ones would be um, sectional views in future and this is like a uh, launch pad. Uh, and I wanted uh, this project to be a fantasy project. Uh, this uh, machine doesn't exist. So we started with these scratches. Uh, the idea, <laughs> like, uh, yes, this is Batman flying to space. <laughs> okay, and uh, th those are happy co-authors uh, in my kitchen. And our sketches when he tried to show me how cuts through this uh, would go and where, where will be fuel tanks and all this stuff. And our rather stupid 3D model as uh, we didn't need good render for that, but we needed to understand how this will work. So uh, I wanted to make this fantasy spaceship based on shuttle program and based on Buran program, but I wanted it to make something uh, more futuristic, maybe. But when Alexei came to my crew, <laughs> he said, no, we can do something very interstellar like we should do something simply because uh, what you think about will never fly it in the nearest future. So we decided on something like this, where both modules, both stage are reusable. And uh, here you can see um, with what we came up at the end. So those are sections, cross sections of blueprints. And you can see this um, 
what is inside, like tanks. And uh, Alexei was explaining me how this can work. He's a space engineer, so he knows all this stuff. And back to the painting, this is how it turned out. We called it Eos. Uh, this is the Greek garden uh, who rules all the storms and winds. Uh, I hope I am right and she's Greek. Maybe she's Roman. I don't know. I hope she's Greek. <laughs> this uh, title, uh, my friend came with this title. He's from the Large Hadron Collider from CERN. Okay. After this, uh, the really great moment happened. I got my first commission in space industry. I was really happy. That was from the man from near Roscosmos. <laughs> yeah, he also works in other uh, space company, but they all connected. And that was my very first commission in this on this topic. So after this commission came the next one, and this is the most complicated painting for me because a lot of schemes, and I think I made it, a, I was making it during the month, every day. Let's go to the details. Ah, okay, I have some close-ups and <laughs> me in my mm, natural environment <laughs> here. Uh, here uh, you can see why it took me so long to uh, paint it, because all this... Uh, all these blueprints, I made it with my hand, and it's ink, you can see here this small bottles of ink. It's very inky, <laughs> it makes stains, you should, uh, you should uh, get rid of them immediately, or they will stay there, and you should paint over and draw it again, so it's uh, rather stressful. But on the other hand, it's rather, um, it's like a meditation, if you do everything right. <laughs> so, this is why this painting took me so long. This one, um, this is the other, line, the other line of works. We uh, made this with my co-author Alexei Mazur, with whom I was working on the EOS reusable space transportation system I've talked already about. And we liked to work together so much, so we decided uh, next year to make this, uh, this line of works about uh, international programs uh, that last, last works you've seen was about Russian programs. And here it goes about NASA, SpaceX and other stuff. SpaceX also and uh, fantasy about Gerald O'Neill's colony in space and Blue Origin. And there was also somewhere mm, Virgin Galactic. I can see it here, but it was also there. And <laughs> that's really funny. I wanted to show you a small sketches. Uh, uh, this is where it starts. That's really cool because, I don't know, you can't just really... Th this painting, you can't recognize it here. It's just like big pine tree, I don't know, big Christmas tree here and some very aggressive lines here. And this is how it works. So, uh, this time we were living in different cities with Alexei, so the m most of the process we made online. But some time, sometimes we needed to meet each other to, to brainstorm, just to brainstorm. So, we met in Moscow first and made these stupid small sketches. Then I brought big uh, sized craft paper and I draw with pastel pencils this big... Uh, sketchy but yet more recognizable painting how it will be in real size so the idea behind this painting was to show this uh, stage descending but not on the mission control center that's a collage <laughs> uh, more like um, descending on the water we we decided not to show the drone ship here because uh, that would that would have ruined all this part of the painting but uh, we decided to make it like comic style. So here we can add Mission Control Center with people who's really enjoying their beautiful result, who's happy with it. Well, you know, all this uh, SpaceX translation with, when people are clapping hands and hugging at the end of it. So we wanted to show something like this and maybe Elon Musk is here, I don't know. They're really small. A lot of screens here. And my partner's, uh, my partner's part in this project, in this painting, was was this scheme and this scheme and this and all this diagram that was from him. Of course, I painted it, but he had to come up with it. And uh, as his profession is uh, um, control systems in 
rockets rockets control systems so he know all this stuff and he, so he can imagine how this can work uh, exactly this is i think secret information but we just imagined how it can be and here it then i put it here next one we we really wanted to make a painting about the moon uh, this is so 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 romantic and also moon landing is just uh, the greatest achievement of uh, our mankind i don't know just the farthest place where human step I have ever been. Uh, so there was no other thoughts about this. We should have made this painting about moon landing. So our very first sketch looks like this. <laughs> Even now I am not really sure what's here, but yet we understood each other, so it's, it was okay. Then I made a real sized sketch for the painting. And there was this really wild point of view, and Alexei said, no, we can't do this, this is too wild. You can never see this, uh, this uh, mountain, this view, you can never see this circle, part of circle from this point of view they are standing, so we need it more, we, we, we can't do it. You bend it too much. So I decided to make another one, and uh, we, we finished it with this decision. This is, um, this is a real, the real painting, this is the beginning, but uh, also I added here 3D models that Alexei made during uh, our composing of this painting, and also we wanted to add some blueprints here as, as a star constellations. So, the idea behind this painting was... Um, okay, I should go to the... Last one, so we can see the result all this time, but not some scratchy, some stupid sketches. So, this is how it came out. Uh, the idea behind this is uh, something like time traveling. It's about uh, the past, the present here, and the future. Uh, I hope you can see where I am point pointing at, <laughs> because if you can see, that would sound really stupid. So, uh, about the past, we wanted to show as this event, it already happened in the past. Uh, astronauts, uh, they landed there, this uh, descending model of Apollo, it's standing there, it's real, this gold stuff from it uh, is on the surface of the moon. And I really tried to make this landscape like it's on the moon, looking at the photos. <laughs> I hope it looks like. And also I added here some heavy textures, so if you look at it in real life, you can touch it and it's it's kind of funny to touch. Uh, please don't do this, don't touch paintings in museums, only if no one can see but yet. Don't do it, don't do it. So, uh, and here are the ghosts of astronauts standing there and they're looking to the future. This distant star, this, this is the mission that uh, at the time we were working on this painting, uh, the Orion ship was meant to fly there, to the, uh, to the asteroid. But when we finished it, they changed their mission destination and then they changed it again, so it's not easy with actual pro space programs. But uh, at the time, that was uh, very actual. So astronauts, they're looking to this distant future from the past. And for our presence, for our present uh, response, the Earth. Like this big selfie of all humankind. And this trajectory from past to the future, and they're just looking at it. And uh, we decided to show here uh, the SLS. A space launch system and also Orion, Orion spaceship. <laughs> Today I'm trying to call it a starship all the time. <laughs> Orion spaceship and uh, here it is so uh, as a constellation. Also in the interior, uh, if I'm too fast, uh, I think there will be a recording. I hope I hope everything will be okay and it will be, and you can just to look at them longer there, maybe on YouTube or on Facebook, I don't know. Later we'll discuss it. Then, uh, our next painting about SpaceX also, let's show it the result, here it is, it's called Of course I still love you. <laughs> I'm telling this again, but this is one of the very romantic ones. 
because of this uh, love you stuff. Uh, you know, this story about the stage that didn't return. So they they called uh, the drone ship, of course, I still love you. But in this case, it returned. So we wanted to make this romantic view on Cape Canaveral's, on, on Cape Cana Canaveral's waves. And uh, we also wanted to add some technical stuff there, like this trajectory. And here, when all the underwater stones were found to be were to be fine, sorry. Um, our first sketches, they looked like this. They were um, okay. And we were speaking like, okay, I like this, I like this. Alexei said, I like this. And then I made this one and Alexei said, hmm, this trajectory can't exist. I, I, I really hate this trajectory. We should do something else. And he made this. This peak, this is... Um, the background is just for the color scheme and also drone ship and trajectory like Alexei draw it. So he said we should do something like this. But then I said no, I want the point of view like this. And after this we had a fight. And during this fight we had a lot of uh, variants that we can draw. I had my a headache uh, and we almost we really fought over it. <laughs> you can see some funny was actually supported here. But at the end we found the decision that was okay for both of us and so it came out like this. And Alexei said me what to write here. <laughs> uh, this painting is about Blue Origin. I won't talk much about it as it's already half an hour from the beginning of the event and the event is only for an hour. So uh, I just want to tell you that um, at this point where we started to make this painting, um, New Glenn was, to, uh, was going to fly to the moon. So this is why this moon is here and also a drone ship like on the previous painting. And the interesting thing about this painting is that uh, the perspective is bent here, like here it is in front of us and then the stage fly there and then it doesn't return, but we decided to bend the perspective so we can see all these little spacecraft satellites flying from the stage here. So this moment is very far away from us, somewhere there. And also, hmm, you can ask something here, it's like this punctuation mark. Here it goes. Next painting about the Mars Reformation. This uh, is a very fast sketch. But also we wanted to make it like time travel painting, like this is about the moon I told about. And here's another sketch that uh, Alexei made of. It's like uh, from, it's made of some pics from the internet, just to understand what's what will be where. Then after I've seen this, I made this big scale sketch. And after this, you can see the result. There were a lot, lots of steps between all these sketches. So when we were pin, when we were playing ping pong with with our sketches, sending it back and forward from Moscow to Saint Petersburg. So the idea here was to make it uh, looks like this terraformation of Mars is happening step step by step. Like this crew dragon is descending here, and this. Uh, oh be fair how you call it now mm, starship this starship uh, landed here on this uh, small hill also now small solar habitats are happening here they start to enlarge and now you can see big domes and bigger dome and i i said it almost like a big bada boom okay and at the end uh, not big bada boom but uh, the real uh, ter ter terraformed mars like people are walking here, their dog. Uh, it's really small, you can see it, but you can go to the website and observe singing, singing Christmas trees there and all these uh, funny details I added there. I really enjoyed to add there some Easter eggs. Uh, even me, even now, now, even me can find all of them, but that was fun, really fun part of it. Here you can see NASA's rover and small detail we added here about Russian space, it's Mars 3. Here it is. Also, there's really a great thing about it as this painting is uh, enrolling in time. You can see here this channel and at this side it is still dry. 
but on this side it is uh, full of water. I think that's a really great metaphor for, for all this painting. That was Alexei's idea. Also here, funny detail, uh, the postcard or the letter from Mars, like um, someone who moved to the Mars, he sent it to the Earth or maybe back from the Earth. And this letter is signed with our names of co-authors, me and Alexei. And also I just uh, imagined and composed some zip code, like there's also a letter or number here for Mars. Like now we add there about country or street and also about planet here. And uh, <laughs> I talked about Earth and I pointed here, but that's not Earth, that's uh, ter terraformed Mars here. And we used uh, real uh, pictures and real 3D model, I think. Um, there are this uh, research how Mars would look if it would be covered with water. So this is also this painting. I really like it and this arm, it's all and this texture. Okay, this is, this is another retrofuturistic painting. Uh, it's, um, it's inspired by O'Neill's cylinders. Okay, I should move myself here. It's about space colonies, um, about space habitats. Um, you know that um, the book, uh, The High Frontier by Gerard O'Neill, that was the beginning of all uh, the, of the idea of the space habitats. And it was written in 1977, I think. And all this interstellar stuff or all other science fiction movies, they, they were gathering their ideas for space habitats from this, from this book. And this book, um, it, includes, it includes this uh, really fun and romantic part, like Letters from Space. Um, it is written like someone who moved, like a couple who moved to the space habitat is writing to their friend who stayed back on Earth. And in this book, in these letters, uh, he, uh, he or she, I don't remember, describes this uh, popular sport on this space habitat, flying foot-powered, I think it's foot-powered, planes in zero gravity. As you can see, this is the cylinder and gravity is made by rotating. So in the middle of this cylinder, on the axis, there's zero gravity. So if you climb there, you can fly this really big plane <laughs> just with your feet. Okay. So ah, here it is, the big, big size. I really enjoyed drawing it. A little of small small figures here and small planes here and this uh, cartoonish character here. Okay, here I just wanted to say that um, those big paintings, it's not the only one that I make. I also made some, make some illustrations. Here is, uh, those are made on iPad. That's me when I had blonde hair and this is a space navigator who like a composer, he like make all this uh, navigational stuff happening in like in a futuristic movie. And also here's Alexandra Romanova, Theremin of the Moon. She is a real person and she's a theremist and this like uh, fantasy about Dear Moon project. And that's me with my boyfriend staring into the first satellite, Sputnik as you know it. Like I don't know, like we are looking into the window to space. <laughs> I think it looks a bit like washing machine, but yet like it's window to space. And this is, this was, okay, I'll just move my window here for a moment so we can see how, how many paintings are here. It's about um, Russian projects. And this is my biggest commission yet. Um, I worked on the calendar for Glove Cosmos and my favorite one is this one with, uh, I think it's growls, uh, ground squirrels. And Soyuz, of course. I also like this one and ground station also I think is good. So this, is, this was my biggest commercial, <laughs> not commercial, sorry, that's Russian word, biggest commission. Okay. And also this funny commission was for the space team. This is uh, some kind of very, um, it's not very, it's not cheap tea. <laughs> it's uh, very expensive. And I think that uh, I haven't drink mine yet, uh, but this, uh, they reached to me to, uh, and asked to make this uh, space collection. And I really enjoyed it, like Mars, Earth here, Gabba tea space collection. Maybe you can find it on the internet. 
This painting is um, not usual. The form of the canvas is hexagonal. I, I should call it hex maybe next time. So it's about Rosetta and Philae. And uh, I'll go to the next one because I like it very much. It's uh, Star Voyagers, Star Pioneers. And why it is called like this? Because I wanted to put ideas both from this plate and from the golden rec record of a Voyager here and just to bring those persons to life, those persons to life, so they can fly somewhere into space, bring this idea of reaching for the uh, reach, reaching for the extraterrestrial intelligence somewhere out there, like it somewhere exists, and all these symbols, they're, not all of them, but most of all, they're encrypted on this painting, and I think it's also rather romantic, and the center of this painting is Earth. So as on this peak, uh, this is the scheme that locates our Earth in the... So, so, so some, I don't know, aliens can find it. <laughs> Not everyone thinks not everyone thinks it's a good idea, but yet here it goes. And the, uh, this painting from this hexagonal series, New Horizon. Uh, it's called New Horizon at Ultima Thule, but um, after I finished it, uh, they just renamed <laughs> this object and now it has an, uh, another name, other problem with drawing something in that not in the real world, it all changes very fast, all change very fast. So about Hexes, this was a big project. Uh, we worked with a girl from University in St. Petersburg on science communication and with a girl from MIT and we got a grant. So maybe one day this installation of Hexes that looked like James Webb telescope, I hope it will see the world, see the world and everything will be okay with this project. If you're interested in it, just write me. I'll send you the presentation about it. So next to the next uh, to the next painting, this is Soyuz Femme Crew. So it sends this feminist message that all women can go to space and can work on these dangerous and interesting jobs. And uh, here is a real astronaut here. It's Samantha Christopheretti, and also Russian cosmonaut Anna Kikina. She um, will fly to space soon, I think. And also this is uh, Anastasia Stepanova. She is uh, really She's really great, and maybe one day she'll fly too, but she's not a cosmonaut yet. But she's um, the participant of isolation experiments, so maybe you know her from somewhere from the internet. And here's the close-up to it. I really like it also because this is this famous view from the hatch uh, when cosmonauts, so when they return home, or you can just see them from this round hatch. and. This is a very recognizable view. And also Starman painting. The fun part about this painting is that uh, the admirer of my artworks uh, once just wrote to me and he said that uh, he wants me to make this painting and he added a sketch. And I, I liked it, so I decided why not and I worked on it. So now I have this painting about Starman driving his Tesla somewhere in the emptiness. <laughs> Here is small, 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 mm, sub small title like "Don't panic and go to Mars," because I know, know that uh, on the board of this car he had uh, this book with him, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and I wanted to add this famous phrase from there. Also, you can see here Mars, Earth, Sun, so we are bringing bigger scale here and black hole. And also I added some blueprints of Falcon Heavy, stage on the drone ship, successful as always almost, and little, really tiny Tesla here in the in this rocket. Okay, so the next one. I like this one too. This is about Buran's uh, Buranodrome, <laughs> Buran project. It's retro-futuristic fantasy about the spaceport where Buran's flight to the to the space every day and it's just very usual and casual and about this exactly is this painting too so it's about space shuttle and this old style car is underneath so i wanted to make it like uh, uh, someone just changed the vehicle so she just went to this beach she went 
out of this vehicle. She get she she got on this spaceship and she went somewhere into the I don't know to the other to, to the <laughs> to the other planet. Okay. Uh, next one is about yes submission insight. I made a sketch for this painting during the online translation, and you know all these happy shivers when it landed successfully, and that was a really happy moment in the mission control center and for me. So I decided later to make this um, painting based on my sketch. This one is really big. You can see it here near me. <laughs> so the size is like half of me or maybe more. Also. Here you can see this uh, section of Mars and maybe something inside it uh, will help scientists to understand Mars more. So I wanted to add not only flight sequence here, but also this section of Mars. And this painting will be the last one here in my presentation. Uh, this is about Gagarin. It's square one and um, it's a little different from others because the background is, uh, it looks like it's made of, pay of newspapers. Uh, if to talk exactly, it's made about the newspapers that uh, went, uh, went out on the day after Gagarin returned safely to Earth. And it's all about his uh, brave, very about this flight, about how big, uh, how big this step is for all humanity, humanity. And you know, all these papers they were made in, in USSR, and uh, they're just uh, very, um, they're filled with this happiness and admiring of this, um, of his flight. When, when, if you enlarge this, you can see like uh, awesome very great like all these titles and I think this is uh, th this is something that shows uh, the mood of people on this day and that's great. Also as you can see Gagarin here and his parachute uh, it's still floating so he's just descended and here's his uh, capsule with its own parachute as it's descended separately those time and also this uh, capsule in the in the air it's a blueprint but also there is a map a world map inside of it if you can recognize it here it's, that's the continents so i wanted to add this metaphor that this event is uh, really great for not only for ussr but for all the world and also on the orbit of this earth the small vostok Vostok spacecraft is traveling. So this this is I I really enjoyed it. it it's more drawing style than other paintings. So we can see it here. Oh, another close up. S small spaceship and all the dates and titles and I like how it turned out. Okay. That, that would be all. I really hope that you, you enjoyed what I was telling you. So I was really happy to talk about it. Um, I don't know, maybe you have some questions. Maybe I should tell something else or show something else. Ah, okay. I think, uh, so, sorry for this pause. Uh, I think uh, there are some comments, but I don't know why I can't see them in the comment section, but uh, Kelsey Poor is writing them to me right now, so I can answer. Uh, sorry for the post, we were trying to find these comments and we found them. Okay, one second. Anastasia, I think your work is fantastic and I'm a big fan. I purchased your amazing calendar last year. Ah, okay. I see, I received the invitation to join the astronomical artists. I'm sorry, a long talk for me <laughs> on this quarantine days. Association of astronomical artists, and I invite you to join us as an artist. Though I don't believe. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Thank you. I think this invitation is really great. So I look at the link or what I'll have there, and I hope I'll join. Thank you, Aldo Spadoni. Hope I didn't misspeak your name. Okay, another comment. 
how long on average does it take to complete a painting? Well, for me it's different. Uh, for me it's uh, different from painting to painting. I can show here one second. For example, this one, I usually take uh, a commission for a month, or for a month, one month or two months. Uh, lately I've been taking them for two months because this is how I can work on two paintings or three at once, usually two. It's just easier if I don't feel very inspired with one on, or I think that I spoil something, I can go to another one and later return. But usually it's about a month. But it's not easy to respond to that, it's not easy to answer because I can't really tell the amount of hours. I'm going to show you this painting. Oh, sorry, hope you won't get head headache from me scrolling very fast. Okay, as I've already told you, this one was... A, we ma I made this for a month, so that was really, really, really long, <laughs> really complicated for me. And uh, this month I made it every day for about 10 hours, that was complicated. And this one I made in three days. I don't know how. I got this uh, really fast com coming deadline as I had to travel to Moscow for the space school and I needed to finish it very fast. And I haven't sleep much <laughs> because I think um, I was working on it for three days without sleeping, but yet it's not very complicated. And um, uh, I've already told you about this project, about seven page paintings we made with Alexei. Uh, and I think we, we made them for two months. That was a record. That was very fast. <laughs> From the scratch to the result. Okay, another question. How many space launches have we gotten to see? Asks Steve Fisher. Uh, one, one lunch, one lunch, I went to the Baikonur, Alexei went too. Uh, we went by car from Moscow, uh, we were traveling for three or four days in the car. Uh, luckily, the weather in Kazakhstan, where Baikonur is situated, uh, the weather in Kazakhstan wasn't so hot as usual. Like, you know, we were going there and when we read uh, this article that you can fry eggs on the Kazakhstan weather and we said, and we were just like, oh no. And then we arrived there and there was pleasant wind, so we, was a little, we were a little afraid that launch may be postponed, but uh, everything, everything went okay and we saw this launch that only once I've seen. I hope once I will be able to come to Cape Canaveral or watch, or watch, or watch Groot launch because or meant how you see it crude i think because this one wasn't with people please tell something about future russian missions did you draw any uh, i think i only make paintings i made paintings about existing project i was thinking about maybe i will draw something about future missions ah i made i made something about future mission, but it's not Russian mission. I worked on painting showing... Um, okay, I should find it. It was for the des uh, Design Bureau of Fakil, and they make ionic thrusters. Hmm. If you wait a little, maybe I can... Okay, no, I can't. <laughs> So they were making uh, ionic thrusters for one for one web. No, no one web. How we call it? Oh my god! <laughs> Wait a second. Okay, I won't show it there, but um, you can find it on my website. Uh, it's um, near future projects and. They work with a Russian company. This is the closest. And maybe one of these uh, 
paintings I made for Glove Cosmos is is about future projects. I don't know. What I see from here, it's all about existing projects. Okay, <laughs> Mother Alexei, who's also my co-author, asked here, do you have any paintings that are not published yet? Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> I should publish. I made commission lately. So it's also for the Russian space company. It's for Russian private space company Sputniks. And I should post them also. Can you say something about the types of artist material you use? What kind of paint? Asks Aldous Padoni. Uh, it's all acrylic uh, on, on canvas, except those that I'm showing right now. These uh, small peaks here, they are actually bigger sized. Uh, it's like uh, 60 to 90 dimension for these ones and they're on canvases, but others are a little smaller and mm, others are a little smaller and and they are on paper. But I don't like working on paper with acrylics very much because it's um, just not so comfortable. Here is digital one, so it's on iPad in Procreate and also I work on graphic tablet now. But all of this space stuff I showed you, they're all on canvases and this, uh, you can see this mountain, oh, oh no, this hill here, it's made of light rocky texture, it's um, Italian texture paste. Mm, really hard to get now, I don't know if I can buy <laughs> another another one. And also these uh, lines that you can see on these domes and all the blueprints I've been showing you, this is ink. It's um, I use uh, ink and and just it. I don't know, maybe only Gagarin one is different because I also used papers and this, you know, there is this technology when you can use some ink from printer to make this look like faded collage. And also more ink here than on other paintings as this ground here is also made of ink. I really like ink, it's uh, so... Draw, drawing style is much better, I think, in ink and uh, sometimes it feels like it has its own life and it goes somewhere just with the line and uh, at the end you look at it in oh, that was great and it looks great. So I like, I prefer ink. And also varnish, then that's all. Here's texture paste also, so this Mars looks really like it has a volume in the reality. So, I think that's all for now, and uh, an hour has passed very fast for me. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed, you enjoyed my talking. I hope my mistakes wasn't my mistakes weren't so bad, <laughs> and you could still understand me, and had a little of inspiration for the space uh, art and you know, space paintings and space travel from me, from my artworks. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Hope one day I'll talk again. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Goodbye.